Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Uh, today I want to spend some time covering body paint. I will continue doing more Cinema 4D tutorials, more modeling tutorials, but today I want to cover uh, the features, some of the features, just as an introduction and also to get you familiar with using body paint uh, by introducing some of the very basic tools that you need to get a hang of uh, in order to get started and getting up to speed and actually enjoying uh, body paint. The, there is no difference between Cinema 4D and body paint. Well, I say there's no difference. There's one slight difference, and that is the startup layout, the layout of the tools, when you start the program up, that's the only difference. If you go to Maxon site, they have two products, two main products. They have Cinema 4D, or you can buy body paint. And each is kind of advertised as its own program. But no matter which one you get, if you get Cinema 4D, body paint is included with it. It's all in one program. Uh, the tools uh, are integrated together. Both programs are integrated together. If you get body paint, then you have a body paint layout. See down here it says Maxon Body Paint 3D. If this was, if I had purchased Cinema 4D, it would say Maxon Cinema 4D. But all of them have the exact same tools. All of them have the exact same features. There is no difference between the two except for the initial layout and that was very confusing for me at first uh, I wanted I chose to purchase to get body paint because I wanted it for its UV editing and texturing capabilities only to soon find out well I, I got uh, body paint but I also have Cinema 4D at the same time which was kind of an added bonus okay so because you have both programs at once, that's nice because you don't have to use a separate modeling program to create your model or whatever objects you want to create and then import them into body paint, texture them, oh, and then decide later I might want to make this small modeling change and then export it back out, make your modeling change, import it back into body paint, you can do everything right here in Cinema 4D. Well, I want to start off basically showing you uh, some of the features. This is a cube. This is not a modeling program, so I'm not going to get too much into that. And in order to do anything such as painting our cube, we need to make it editable. So I'm going to click on this icon right there. Now, in Body Paint and Cinema 4D, you have... <coughs> different layouts because this program is so strong in its animation features because it's so strong in its modeling features and it's so strong in its uh, texturing features you can create different layouts different interfaces here for the program it comes with several different ones and you can customize it yourself well this is the modeling layout which allowed me to select my primitive object up there as well as uh, make it editable but now I need to utilize the UV and texturing tools in this program so I need to switch layouts and to do that I'm gonna come right up here and on this button I'm just gonna click and hold down now everything that says starts off with Grizz these are my own custom layouts so I'm gonna come over here to uh, body paint UV edit and let me bring this back into the screen here here is our cube when you create an object in Cinema 4D or Body Paint, it has this little icon right here 
and of course you have to make it editable once you make it editable then you have this little tag right here these are called tags and this is a UV what's called a UVW tag but it's a UV tag in other words just like in hexagon when you would create a UV layout as I have demonstrated in many tutorials over at uh, Greek at Play you have to create the layout for your UV map. Well, this little tab right here uh, is your UV map or your UV layout. And in order to access it, you come down here, just click on Live Selection Tool, and click on the Polygon Selection. And now you see I've got uh, all six of my sides here. Well, if I want all of the sides to have the exact same texture then this layout here is fine if I want a different layout if I want all six sides to be individually laid out then I want to come over here and utilize my UV mapping tab right here so I'm gonna click on that and that brings up a whole bunch of different options I'm going to click on Cubic 2 right here, and this will lay out the UV map uh, in a manner in which all sides are uh, connected to one another, so it makes for easy painting. So, I've got this, and that's how I like it. Well, if, say for example, I was in another modeling program like Cinema, um, like Hexagon, and I created a cube, I saved it, and I imported the cube into Body Paint, it would not have this UVW tag, unless, of course, I created the UV map in Hexacon, then exported it, and then imported it into here, then it would recognize, and I saved it as a, you know, exported it as a uh, wavefront object, then it would have this UVW tag. But if you don't have a UBW, UV tag, then we need to create one. So we're going to come right down here to this icon, which is the setup wizard. So I'm going to click on that. It lets me know of all the objects in my scene, which are listed here. In this case, I just have one cube, and there's a check mark next to it. So yes, this is an object that I want to have selected or checked so that I can create a UV map for it. So it's checked. I'll go to Next, and uh, I will start off with Optimal Cubic Mapping, Single Material Mode. In other words, I'm just going to create not only my UV map for it but I'm going to create a material for it as well because as it is right now the object does not have a material applied to it so I'm happy with that click next now I want to create a color for my material it makes it easier to see the UV mesh or the UV map on top of the material so I'm going to make it uh, a white color and the texture size I want it to be 1024 by 1024. By default this checkbox is checked but for something that is uh, perfectly square like this I'm gonna uncheck it that way I know my texture size will be symmetrical because my object is symmetrical. So I'll click finish and it's gonna think about it it's gonna do its thing it lets me know setup wizard has ended so I'm gonna hit close so there are all six of my sides, but I want them laid out like they were before, all connected. So I'll click Cubic 2, and now all my UVs are connected and laid out in an orderly manner. Oftentimes, you might need to, or want to, rearrange some of the polygons. <coughs> on your keyboard the number four five and six will probably be the keys most frequently used when you want to select 
scale and rotate the polygons uh, according uh, that are assigned to your object. So I will select this one. I will hold down my number four key and now I can move this wherever I want. If I hold down the number five key I can scale it however I want and if I hold down my number six key I can rotate it however I want. Now um, when you want to realign or reorganize uh, your UVs, it by default you don't have any snapping that is applied. So if I want to line these up, I kind of have to eyeball it. And in order to eyeball it successfully, you got to zoom right on in and line them all up. And that's more trouble than it's really worth. So, to make life easy for myself, I'm going to click on my Live Selection tool, click on Attributes, come over here to Snapping, and I'm going to enable Point Snapping. Come back over here to UV Mapping. Now I can snap the points of my UVs and line them all up however I want and only the points will uh, you know the, the they will snap according to the points I can select this one and it snaps right to it etc snapping is kind of universal amongst programs or I can select edge snapping and it has the same effect so that's a that's an extremely useful tidbit when you start laying out your UVs. Well, let's come back over to cubic number two. Uh, I can hold down four, move all of them around, hold down five, scale them all up however I want, hold down six, and scale it. Now, because I have snapping enabled, it, I can rotate this, or it, all of these polygons, or any of the polygons, depending upon where I click to begin my rotation. So for example, I'm going to hold down 6 and because my cursor is right here at this corner, I can then use that as the axis for my rotation. Or I'll rotate it there, rotate it here, or rotate it right in the center. Let's come back to cubic 2 and reorient things. So those are some while they might seem very simple, they're extremely important when you're laying out your UV maps. Okay, because we ran the setup wizard, it um, automatically applied or created a texture and applied it to it. Well, sometimes you might create a model in another program, import it into C4D or body paint and you won't have a material applied to it. So let's delete that material. Do I want to save it? No, I do not. Let's create a material so that uh, I, you know, you can uh, start off from scratch. Because if you do your own modeling here in C4D, you're going to need to create your own materials anyway. So I'm going to come up here to File, New Material uncheck that check mark there. Material, I'll just call it test. And I will, on this sphere right here, I will right click. Now in Cinema 4D, and let me make this its own floating box here. In, in Body Paint, you have the option to create many different channels for your texture. Color, diffusion, luminancy, transparency, reflection, blah, 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 blah all the way down. Well, I want to create a color channel. So I will create, click on color. Now I can make the file size or this texture size however large or small I want and whatever resolution I want whatever mode I want, RGB, grayscale, how many bits per channel, 
and the, I have a whole host of options. I can choose a background color. So just to make, just to demonstrate, I'll choose this green color, and I will click OK. And now I have a material for this. Well, it's not really the best looking material, and I want to customize it by painting on it. So the first thing I want to do is on this layer right here, I want to right click and choose new layer. Click on this little arrow here, and now it's just like Paint Shop or uh, uh, Photoshop. You've got layers, which works just like Photoshop, and it's something that's very uh, comfortable and familiar with probably most graphic artists because well, Photoshop is kind of the industry standard. So in keeping with the industry standard, this um, layer system works just like Photoshop. So let's apply a custom texture to this. Well, there are some default settings that body paint has that may or may not be to your liking. And the first is up here under edit I'm gonna click on edit you have let me change to a UV layout mode you have tile U and tile V and the, I never use these and by default tile U is selected and all that simply is is that the U and the V coordinates as they apply to a texture uh, the U goes back and forth horizontally and the V goes vertically think of V for vertical so if I am painting and I get to the far end over here and go off it automatically resumes back on this side and if the tile V were selected then as I paint up here it would then resume down here well I don't need that feature because it also uh, applies to many other features that you would use while you are painting on your model for example uh, the selection tool this is just like a masking tool this is just like in Photoshop if I want to create a mask then I come over here and create a mask etc but look what happens if I go off the edge over here on the right then it continues here on the left and I don't want that so I every time start off by disabling tile U and I will come up here to select and deselect all so now my selection is gone and if tile V were enabled, then as I make my selection up to off of the top, then it appears down here on the bottom. And I don't want that. If you do want it, well, now you know where they are. So let me deselect my selection here. Deselect all. Now, as soon as I came over here to my selection tool, my UVs disappeared right up here on this tab right here on our texture in our texture window click on UV mesh show UV mesh now that gets them back okay let's come over here to our paintbrush and in the attributes section let me scroll down I want the hardness of my brush to be set at maximum now it's a hard edged brush and just like in Photoshop, you can use your open and close brackets to increase or decrease the size of your texture. I'm sorry, the size of your brush. So let's come over here and create a texture. I'm going to come over here to colors. And if I just select a color, then I can paint whatever color I want. Well, I don't want a color, I want a texture. So I'm going to click on Texture Paint. And then this little icon, this little arrow here, I'm going to click on that. And you can't see this, but at the very top of this 
little window, floating window that opened up. I'm going to click on Load from Disk. And this takes me to a default folder where Body Paint looks for textures. Well, um, I don't know what any of these textures are by their names, so what I will do is I'm working in Windows. I'm sure a Mac has something similar. I'm going to click on Thumbnails, and now I can see what my textures are. So I'm going to click on Extreme Rust right here and just paint away. And now I have my Rust material. Well, that looks nice, except that I want the Rust material applied to my object. Well, we need now, we've created our material. What we need to do now is assign this material to our object or objects. And to do that very simply, just drag it right over on top of your cube. And notice the cursor has changed to that down arrow. And just drop it. Drop it right on the cube right there. And there you go. And I'm going to show one or two more little things and then I'll we'll finish up with this tutorial because we're already in 21 minutes. One of the coolest features that is so powerful that I wish Photoshop had has, and it does to an extent, but you really got to jump through a lot of hoops in order to make it work, is scale and rotation. Let's first demonstrate rotation. Rotation is set to zero so that when I paint, well, it's just like it was before, but I can rotate it. Now the texture is rotated minus 67 degrees. 89 degrees, etc. So you can rotate the material, and this is uh, extremely useful if you want to put a wood texture on it, and you can orient which way, which direction the grain is going. Okay, let's reset that back to zero. And scaling. Scaling is so important, especially if you have a, um, a seamless material. You can scale down the scale of the texture that you are applying on here. You can scale it way down. Okay, probably that's a little bit too much, but just to illustrate, you have a lot of power and a lot of flexibility on how you want to paint your model and how and how that texture is being applied to it. You are not forced in any way, shape, or form to settle for something that you don't want. You can make it however you want. And I will demonstrate that a little bit more in the next tutorial. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.